Hey guys, what's going on? Jeff here, and in today's video, I am joined by a very, very, very awesome guest named Rick. He has been working a lot in NFTs recently, and since we just hit 200,000 subscribers on the channel, I've told you guys I want to be learning a lot more about altcoins. I want to be learning a lot more about NFTs, and I brought Rick on the channel because he actually wants to talk a little bit about NFTs to us. Rick, how are you doing, my friends? Good to see you. It's early. It's morning. My brain is just waking up. I'm not ready for the show, but I'm super excited to be here on your show. So thank you for having me. Yeah, well, it's going to be good, man. We are excited to have Rick. Rick, can you tell us a little bit about your journey in cryptocurrency? You told me about your story with working with Joy Pixels and everything. Can you kind of give us a background on who you are and how did you get to this position? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm a, I've been an entrepreneur since the 90s. I'm in my 40s. It doesn't look like it, but I am. I've got a lot of so. age behind me. And uh, so I got into digital currencies uh, in 2014. My, uh, my close friends were just raving about this new technology, Bitcoin, and how it's going to change digital or it's going to change money in general. And, uh, and I'm like, okay, I don't really understand what you're talking about. You know, I can transfer money digitally over my bank or, you know, now through things like Venmo. Uh, but what is this blockchain? Totally over my head. I had no idea what the heck they were talking about. Um, but I did invest, you know, they got me to at least buy a little bit of Bitcoin when it was around $500 or so. And a few years you still, passed you still, by. You still have any of that Bitcoin you bought back then? Oh, who knows if it's the same coin? <laughs> oh, yeah. but, uh, but yes, I still have plenty of That's uh, awesome of fungible tokens. And uh, but yeah, so that at least got me in the door. And that's all you need in this space, yeah. right? It's just to, it's just somebody to kind of push you through. And a few years later, 2017 hit, and I realized, wait, that Bitcoin just crossed 10 grand, right? And, uh, and it was there, I'm like, okay, this is, this is for real. And this is something that everybody knows about or is starting to get to know. Um, I went ahead and sold a little bit to take some profits. And then after that, I'm like, after I sold it, I'm like, did I do the right thing? You know, should I, should I have kept it? Everybody's saying it's going to go to 40,000 and a hundred thousand. And I'm like, did you see this chart over here? <laughs> this thing is straight up. And so I started to sell most of my Bitcoin at that point. But then once it started to dip, let's say eight grand, seven grand, I was like, okay, I'm going to start to dip my toe back and start reinvesting. And that's, that's when I was hooked after that. I started to go on YouTube. I started to discover different personalities. And I ran into this kid who had just exited puberty named Jeb. <laughs> I'm like, wow, this that kid is. is like 17 years old, straight out of high school. And he's probably the most articulate personality oh. I've ever seen on YouTube. And, uh, and I swear to God, your show, I don't know exactly how long ago this was, but at least three or four years ago, um, had a huge influence on me That's awesome. and my investing style. I got into um, more like a day trading style where it was leverage trading. And, uh, and that almost killed me just because um, <laughs> yeah, I couldn't yeah. sleep. I couldn't do function. All I could think yep. about was, What's the price of Bitcoin right now or Ethereum? Mm -hmm. And how do I make money off of these uh, price trends? Well, you've done very well. And for our audience, and uh, you guys will see this when it goes out, um, Rick is a very humble person. So I also want to just kind of give them a little bit of your background. You've been working. I'm going to try and prove you wrong there. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, um, he's been working in, he's been an entrepreneur for a very long time. You did domain like speculation back in the 90s, right? You founded a company, you founded Joy. Can you tell us a little bit about the company Joy Pixel? Because I think that sure. is, is it Joy Pixel or Joy Pixels? I'm sorry. Joy Pixels, plural. Joy Pixels. Tell us a little bit about Joy Pixels because I think that that's some history people need. Joy Pixels uh, was just a fun little project that uh, me and my team created. Um, we were looking for an emoji font or an emoji set to use on one of our new community message boards. And, uh, and none, none existed. You couldn't license any emojis back then. Uh, this was 2013. So we launched uh, our own. We hired some graphical designers to uh, create a, a set of emojis. And this was just open source. We just put it out there. We wanted other people to, to be able to share and use it. Um, and soon enough, we realized this is like a top three download in a lot of different repositories. And, uh, and so we decided, hey, let's just make this a business. We could probably figure it out. You know, We just need to be able to create a licensing structure. And so we turned it into more of a commercialized uh, product. And now it's a freemium product. We still do it today. If you need emojis, you can go to joypixels.com. Um, I highly recommend as a YouTuber to, if you ever use emojis yeah. in your thumbnails or anything like that, uh, please, we invite you to come check it out and, and uh, download them. They're for free, but uh, if you do have a premium license, uh, it's only a few hundred bucks for a company. Yeah. And it was through Joypixels that you really got involved in kind of this 
digital art world, right? And I think that's actually, tell me if I'm wrong, I think that's kind of what's led you into the NFT world, right? Um, let's see, NFTs started to get my attention last year. And I bought my first NFT this year. I was actually pretty late to the party, in my opinion. So um, I think NFTs really started years ago. Uh, CryptoPunks is, is probably one of the most famous NFTs out there. And they, were, they actually debuted in 2017. Um, I didn't know crypto punks that old. Dang. Wow. Yeah. And, you and so my first NFT was actually a MeBit, which is also by the same company that uh, that produced CryptoPunks. And that was only in this year. I think it was in March. Um, and so that was kind of my first NFT experience. And since then, I was kind of hooked. Well, you've come a long way in NFTs. And the reason I'm asking is because that's kind of what I want to talk about with you today. We are uh, here at the Crypto Jab community. We're trying to learn more about NFTs. I want to get more involved in NFTs. I think that they are the future of not just art, but also things like contracts and land deeds and everything. And uh, can That's you right. just explain a little bit about what an NFT is and why they're so revolutionary and why you've actually gotten into them quite a bit recently? I like to compare NFTs to technology today, right? Like um, if you compare Bitcoin um, to a technology, it would be like a payphone, right? The first way to communicate through voice digitally from one person to another. Um, so if you look at Bitcoin as the payphone, and then you look at like a smart contract coin like Ethereum or Cardano, they, those would be kind of like your flip phone. Okay, now we can actually hold the actual device in order to talk to each other and maybe even text on it, right? Back in the day, if you're texting using numbers. NFTs, you could think of as a smartphone, right? There's so much more data that can be stored into the token and it could have different properties. It could have, it could be attached to certain media. So now the coins come alive, right? Imagine trading Ethereum, but it might have an audio clip, a video clip, or even a photo attached to it. Well, those properties now add additional value compared or in addition to the, just the scarcity of the coin, right? And so, and as well as other traits and properties that you can control, um, and the reason why it's, it's valuable, just like an ERC-20 token might be, is because it's proven on the blockchain. So you can prove digital ownership, but in a new way that goes beyond just one coin, like Ethereum, which is identical from coin to coin to coin. You give me Ethereum, I give you Ethereum, you can't tell the difference between the coins. But you give me an NFT, I know exactly right. what properties are attached to the NFT, and due to those properties, you can now do tremendous different things in the real world as well as the digital world. And that's what it means by being non-fungible, right? Can you explain a little bit about what the difference between a fungible token and a non-fungible token is? Yeah, it's just a fancy way of saying it's it's unique. It's different right. from each other, right? So fungible mean, I don't even know the true definitions of these things. I'm just going off of what I know. But fungible, as we know it today, just means the same. You know, you it, means can make like, it means like exchange. Like if I, if I were to give you a dollar bill and then I switch the dollar bill with you, they're the they're they're the they're they're, they're different equal. physical yep. but they're equal is basically what that's getting out totally. NFT, right? yeah. yeah absolutely so so other than because this is one of the big arguments that people make against nfts they say oh well nfts are just for collectibles they're just for art and that's a giant bubble what do you what, what um how would i say uh what use cases do you think nfts are going to have over the next five years other than just, you know, art and avatars, I think that's a big market that's going to do very well. But what are some other places that you can see NFTs being implemented? Well, let me give you an example of an NFT that kind of changed my life. And that was this year. So um, I'm a big fan of Gary Vee. I've been following him. Uh, he's been my motivation for you know, the yeah. last five years to, to really drive harder and push harder. Mm -hmm. When I feel lazy, I go to Gary Vee's show and I'm like, okay, I'm a lazy asshole. Let me go. He's going to curse you uh, out. I need to get to work. Get back on He gets on the show. He's like, why yeah. are you watching me? Go to work. Go do get something. To work. Film yourself. <laughs> you know, put yourself out there. Yep. And uh, so, so anyhow, when he came out with his uh, new NFT called V Friends, I'm like, yeah. I have to get one. I have to get one. I have to show my support. I have to, I, I think it'll be a good investment long term. And, uh, and so the one thing that Gary did, which was different, is he provided personal access um, through his NFT program. So if you purchased one of his NFTs that gave uh, personal access, you could do things like go bowling with him. You could, be, you could sit front row at a basketball game with Gary Vee. Hmm. And the one that I got that I purchased and invested in was the Podcast Panther, which allows me to do a 40-minute interview with Gary Vee twice, once this year and one, ne one next year. Hmm. And so I'm like, I have to get this. It started, it was a Dutch auction. It started at 20, I think it was 25 ETH. 
Okay. At the time, it was like four grand. That's a hundred thousand dollars. I contemplated and there was five podcast Panthers. <laughs> I oh contemplated gosh. this overnight. I'm like, are these going to be <laughs> sold out by the time I wake up? And uh, luckily they weren't. And I got it kind of at the floor, which was right around 10 ETH, still, you know, 40 some thousand dollars. However, I think that's a bargain for being able to interview Gary V. Yeah. Um, on on whatever podcast that I create, I didn't have a podcast, by the way. Oh, but, okay. Uh, <laughs> I just knew that this was an amazing NFT, and that just the ability to do that would be incredible. Um, however, now we have a podcast, and that actual NFT will be used on Wednesday during uh, our show called Mojo Live. And uh, I invite everybody who's listening here to uh, yeah to join us. It, it'll be straight from our Discord community. So um, we'll, we'll talk about the project if you want, uh, but yeah, uh, absolutely. But yeah, going back to your original question, um, future use cases of NFTs, we'll start with a, like metaverses. If you've heard of Sandbox, Decentraland, you know, you can buy land in those metaverses. Those will be, you know, uh, secured by an NFT. Obviously artwork, you're talking digital music, ownership of digital music as well. Um, Blau has a new has a new product, new platform called Royalty that's coming out, allows fans to actually purchase NFTs, which act as future a fractional ownership in an, in a song or an album, hmm. right? So, and this kind of will work, I think, in the real world that's as well. NFTs can uh, have fractional ownership in things like homes or even cars, maybe someday. Hmm. But uh, but I, th I think the whole the point is digital ownership, right? So, uh, yeah, think of. Um, digital ownership of an event, you know, so it could be a ticket for an event that instead of buying tickets from a centralized company, you're actually just buying it directly from the blockchain. But, awesome. uh, but there's so many things that go beyond that. Obviously, artwork and collectibles is kind of a use case for today. Um, tomorrow, it could be things like storing DNA. I heard I read something about uh, the ability mm -hmm. to store DNA instead of, um, you know, uh, centralized storage, like a 23andMe. Um, wow. So, so many use cases that go beyond even my expertise or knowledge and ability um, that I think is going to just surprise everybody. Well, I, I want to ask you more about Mojo here in a second. And by the way, is there a link that we can have in our description where people can go and find that? Absolutely. Mojoheads.com. So, yep, awesome. mojoheads.com. Well, well, let's talk about that in just a second, because that's really interesting what you have going on there, especially with that picture behind you. I want to ask you about that, too. <laughs> but before we get there, there's one question that I have for everybody whenever I talk about NFTs, and this is kind of a technical one. There is um, a big concern that a lot of people have around implementing blockchain in things that happen in the real world, like voting or with digital ownership of different physical goods like a car, because there is the... There's a technical term for it. I don't know what it is, but it's the barrier between having something in the real world and putting it on a blockchain. On a blockchain, digitally verifiably scarce, that's all great. That's what the blockchain is for. But there is a um, there's a tamper risk whenever you're taking the ownership from something physically, like a serial number on a car or something, and putting it on a blockchain. What Do you see that as being a problem, uh, uh, an issue for the development of NFTs as an ecosystem, this kind of... Um, the, the risk of there being tampering in between the physical world and transferring that uh, ownership onto a blockchain? Maybe. Um, it's not a topic that I've thought about very much, so I'm not sure. But uh, I think, yeah, whenever you do have physical goods, that can be tampered with. So, um, you know, maybe I guess there's a situation where you could see NFTs proving ownership of, let's say, a designer handbag or something like that right. um, to where, you know, the handbag would have a serial number or maybe a chip that's installed into it. And that would then... Uh, that would actually link to the NFT that you own. So maybe the NFT itself proves ownership of that handbag. Hmm. But, you know, when you're dealing with anything that's physical, of course, it could be tampered with. And who knows what somebody could do to actually install that chip into something, uh, you know, counterfeit bag. And then right. all of a sudden it's, it's again, a problem. So, um, but, but yeah, absolutely. Uh, who knows where it goes when it comes to things like mortgages or, you know, switching titles of a house. Um, a buddy of mine who's a real estate here in Las Vegas, he, he hits me up and he's like, hey, um, you're the crypto guy. Uh, how do I work, you know, a deal where somebody wants to buy a house with Bitcoin? And I'm like, I have no idea. That's a really good question. Um, <laughs> I have no idea how escrow or titles or banks, you know, would transfer a Bitcoin, you know, transfer a house being paid over Bitcoin. But you have to imagine that someday, um, all of that, all of the, uh, the, the paperwork and records that uh, prove ownership of a home, like title, will eventually transfer to the blockchain. 
And whether it's through NFTs yeah. or some other means of technology, it, it just makes sense. Um, and that goes I, a little bit beyond what I can probably predict, but, uh, but that's kind of what my feeling on that. I think fundamentally why NFTs and blockchains are so incredibly important is because the entire way that our world is built is built on this idea of ownership. Like I own this laptop, I own my company, you own the microphone that's sitting in front of you. And ownership online until Bitcoin was created and since it's been iterated upon with things like Ethereum and smart contracts and decentralized applications and um, now NFTs, which is the latest iteration of that, it was impossible to have uh, a decentralized permissionless way of proving ownership of anything online. You had to have some kind of central entity that was a gatekeeper and those centralized entities can be very, very dangerous. So the reason for anybody out there who might even be skeptical about cryptocurrency, not just NFTs, why these things have value is because they are a revolution in allowing for digital scarcity to be verifiably proven online. It didn't have, it didn't exist before Bitcoin came around. And NFTs are just another way of doing that with things that are not necessarily currency, not necessarily uh, smart contracts, but also allow for you to, in the future, like you said, have land deeds on a blockchain being digitally verifiably scarce with no uh, threat of a of an intermediary coming in and saying you can't do that. Um, so that's why this is so powerful. But I also I want to pivot a little bit because I th I know that you're in the process of launching your own NFT project. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, first, let me just say you described NFTs so perfectly that, you know, as as a, a potential expert to help your show out, I don't know if you need me. Based on what oh, no. <laughs> no, well, the thing is, it's just NFTs are just the, I've worked very hard to try and figure out a simple way to explain why Bitcoin's valuable. And I found the sentence, the first digitally verifiably scarce resource in human history is the best way to explain that. And then you explain what those words mean. NFTs are just another iteration of that, that um, that channels and makes uh, that property more specific into a certain place that is usable. And by the way, guys, for everybody watching this, Rick is a friend of the show. He's actually been introduced to us by Kelly, who's one of our researchers. He's a great guy, and we do want to have him back. So make sure to you know tune in again to see Rick and all of his expertise in NFTs. I've already learned a ton about them just from uh, hearing about him. But I really do want to hear about your new NFT project, especially that poster on the wall behind you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll start with the, the photo here. Um, it's it. actually a piece of artwork that was created by uh, one of my favorite, or my, one of my favorite artists. Um, I started to collect her works on uh, Foundation, and reached out to her. I said, "Hey, would you be interested in creating der a derivative? I actually have uh, 30, 37 NFTs that are based on uh, my own character, and um, you can find those. It's called MojoHeads.com or MobyHeads.com. There's, Mo there's MojoHeads.com, the project I'm working on right now that we'll talk about, and then MobyHeads.com, which was uh, just a personal collection of NFTs. Uh, anyhow, and so based on one of my Moby heads, she created this one. I have like a Moby head that has a mind blown type emoji reaction. And so everything's exploding out of my brain. Uh, and she added a lot more so coolness cool. to the factor. Yeah. And I'm, I'm like, this is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. It's she awesome. Sends, I love that. She sends me the digital file. I went ahead and uh, get, get, got it printed out and put on the wall here. Um, it's, it's so amazing. And actually we're going to be selling this as an NFT within the next week. Um, so I'll be posting this uh, on my Twitter once it's for sale and anybody can own the digital version. So there, there's a really good use case right there. There you go. Well, tell us a little bit about, uh, more about, uh, Mojo heads and that project. Can you explain like, what is that? How is that? I think that's launching here pretty soon. Like, can you tell us a little bit about all that? Yeah. I appreciate the time to talk about Mojo heads. Um, yeah. it's a digital collectible and, uh, I really got involved in the art space. I started buying art from uh, ind independent artists um, on foundation.app and really enjoyed the experience. Um, you know, I went from collecting coins to collecting NFT collectibles to creating to collecting artwork and nothing has had more of an impact on me personally um, than the feeling of helping an artist and validating their work and, and showing them how much they're appreciated. Um, once you buy a piece of work from an artist, you know, you get almost an immediate reaction from that artist of just, you know, appreciation. Um, and it, it can be life-changing to buy an NFT from an independent artist, right? You would think that uh, an artist on, on the, uh, or any artist these days creating NFTs are doing very, very well, but there's so many of them. And so there's so much supply. So it's hard for them to get noticed. So the mission behind Mojo Heads is to help artists be seen. And as an emoji company, we thought the coolest way to do that would actually be to create emoji characters based on their actual real life face and put it on the blockchain. So we're, we're, we're creating the first NFT collectible 
for artists and actually making it so that their face is the collectible. So think of it as like a rookie card for, yeah. you know, an art, an emerging artist or That's rising really star fun. in the space. Right. So, you know, if American Idol was kind of like this revolution of new, new singers or, um, you know, Shark Tank was the revolution of new entrepreneurs, I believe NFTs are going to kickstart, you know, this huge art culture and allow, you know, anybody of any age to just simply pick up a tablet, start drawing, mint that as an NFT and have their own, you know, little side hustle or little hobby that, that they can actually generate some new revenue from. And uh, that's kind of what NFTs really, that's why they're so powerful. It just allows anybody to uh, the freedom to create anything that they want. And, uh, and somehow, um, you know, with a little, a lot of time and a little bit of effort, build an audience and, and start making revenue, just like you did with your show. Um, NFTs are just providing a new medium for that. I love that. I love that so much. I really like that analogy of it's like the, it's like the American Idol. It's like the Shark Tank for artists, because I think that the art world, and I'm sure you would be able to weigh in on this. I think the art world has become remarkably exclusive. It's very, very, very difficult for an artist to make any kind of money in art. But then yep. some of the artists who have the right connections will make millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars. So very, very, very skewed market towards people that have all those connections. I think the one great, uh, not just the one, but one of the great things about NFTs is it helps to flatten all that out and hopefully give more opportunity to some of those artists that have a lot of skill. I went to high school um, in an academy school. Um, so everybody who was in the school had to be in an academy. You couldn't go there unless you were in one of them. I was in the Academy of Design Technology. We learned a lot, a lot about coding. I coded games and everything. People probably don't know this about me. I don't talk about it much. But uh, at my school, um, there was a lot of art kids. And every single one of those people were so talented. And none of them will ever make any money doing it unless you have something like NFTs. They have a passion. They have a drive. They have value that they can provide because there's a lot of value in art. But the economics around it have been so messed up that artists have not been able to make a living doing it unless you have those right connections. I think NFTs really give the ability for those artists to do that. So, well, Rick, also, I want to I want to kind of. Uh, give you an opportunity to talk about something that you offered our team and offered our audience. You offered, can you talk a little bit about that? You know well, what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, my buddy said that you're approaching 200,000 uh, subscribers. So congratulations, yes. my friend. Thank you very much. We passed I, I assume it. Oh, you did? Yep. <laughs> I was yep. like, I know that it's coming up. The day that I was passed. out of the, the day I was out of the office is the day that we passed it. Go figure. I just but. checked it's 198 uh, the other day. So, yep. I mean, you're oh, rocking and rolling, man. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I told Kelly, I'm like, I would love, love, love to be able to contribute a few mojo heads to the, to the actual uh, show. And you guys can hand them out to your viewers. Maybe Jeff would, Nation, love, uh, would love to own a mojo head. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to set you guys up with five of them. We, uh, awesome. we mint mojo heads uh, on Friday or actually next Friday, November 19th. So um, right after that, I'm going to reserve five of them for the show. I would love to get them in your viewers' hands. Uh, maybe it'll yeah. be their first NFT. That would be freaking yeah. insane. And uh, and yeah, we would we would we would love to work with you guys going forward for sure. That would be awesome. And guys, you guys will hear more about all of that as it gets a little bit closer. I think this video is going to be going out before that happens. But you guys are going to hear more about that. I don't know the exact details of how we're going to go about doing that giveaway, but I'm really really excited about it because these mojo mojo heads are going to be pretty rare and they're going to go pretty fast. So you guys are not going to want to miss out on that. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you'll be updated on that. And also make sure to follow me on Twitter at CryptoJeb because that Twitter will probably be involved in that giveaway in some way, shape, or form. Rick, where can they find information about MojoHeads? MojoHeads.com? MojoHeads.com. If you go on Twitter, we're also MojoHeadsNFT. Um, okay. my, my Twitter is MojoBoby. So I go by Rick in the real life and Moby in the metaverse or online. Yeah. Um, and we are also doing a contest starting today. Um, which may be tomorrow, depending upon when you're, when this actually airs. But uh, uh, if you go on my Twitter, Mojo Moby, um, we're going to do a contest where we're actually drawing. I'm going to give everybody the ability to submit a, a doodle um, for Gary V's 46th birthday. So we're going to be interviewing Gary V on our show in our Discord. And uh, and so what I'd love to do is is provide Gary with kind of a personalized uh, birthday gift where yeah. anybody can actually submit a doodle in our discord it'll just be a digital drawing you can do anything you want to celebrate uh gary v and the culture that he's created um and then we'll present it to him on our show next wednesday and hope that maybe we can even turn that winning doodle into an nft 
There you go. That is awesome. I've been watching Gary Vee for shoot almost five years now. I started watching him when I was 16. The dude has a, that is, he's probably the most talented social media person on the planet. I would hope he does. He runs Vayner Media and that's a lot of what they do. Really smart guy. It's awesome that you're going to get to interview him. Guys, make sure to check out all of the links down below. Mojoheads.com. It's mobyheads.com also is your personal collection, I think. Personal collection. Very good, man. Yep. yep. I even get them mixed up, to be honest. They just said yep. earlier. And then they can find your Twitter. Uh, uh, what's your Twitter again? Mojo Moby. M-O-B-Y. Mojo Moby. And then can they find the Discord from your Twitter? Uh, they can from the Mojo it's Twitter, yes. Cool. Awesome. Well, Rick, I really appreciate you coming on our show. I'm really looking forward to that giveaway. I cannot wait to get some of those Mojo heads in the hands of our audience. Thank you guys so much for watching. Do you have any final closing thoughts, Rick, before we wrap it out? Not at all. I can't wait for this bull run to really hit its peak, man. I mean, this is yeah. the most exciting part of I have waited so long oh, for these yeah. coins to mature. It's been an emotional roller coaster, and I have lost so much sleep, especially <laughs> leverage trading. <laughs> Day trading, I don't, that, yeah. I don't know. Uh, man, I got to say that um, when I was doing day trading, I would wake up in the middle of the night so much, either from a nightmare that everything was going to zero, or because I had an open trade that I needed to check and yeah. make sure that it didn't go haywire. And know, since yeah. then, since then, I've just enjoyed the luxury of holding <laughs> and and Same. not really caring about trading. Yeah, I, but, I realized uh, early on, I, I, I one of my first trading rules I ever set for myself back when I traded a lot more was never sleep on a trade. Just I don't care what you think is going to uh, happen with the trade. It's a really good rule. Yeah, don't sleep on the trade unless you're doing like a swing trade that's going to take a month. Yeah, but but if what if you can't get to trade, sleep? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's no point. It's just going to you're not losing sleep is probably not worth it. Well, anyway, Rick, it was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much for coming on the show, and I really looking for, I'm really looking forward to bringing you on the show again in the future, talking more about NFTs. You're our guy. You're our inside NFT guy. This is what I do I'm every really day. To it's it. the most passionate thing for me in my life and uh, i can't wait i can't wait That's to be awesome. here again so thank you well guys if you enjoyed today's video make sure to uh, make sure to hit that like button make sure to go check out all the links down below and make sure to stay tuned because i'm looking forward to doing that giveaway before i go guys i do just first want to thank each and every single last one of you for watching as always and i will see you guys in the next video peace oh i got a real good feeling